konnichiwa, Japanese amo no Misa desu. Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to use te aru. So we've already learned how to use te iru, right? Which is used for the present continuous tense. For example, you can say Nihongo benkyo shite iru informally and Nihongo benkyo shite imasu to mean I'm studying Japanese or I've been studying Japanese. Another example. Hon o kaiteru. Hon o kaiteru. That means I'm writing a book or I've been writing a book. If you omit the i from te iru, then that's the most informal way and that's the most common way to say I'm doing something informally. For the formal speech, you can still omit the i and say kaitemas, but that sounds semi-formal. So if you want to sound very formal and polite, then you have to put the i back in and say kaiteimas, kaiteimas. So we use the te form plus iru, right? But there's also this, the te form plus aru, aru. Remember, iru is for the living things and aru is for the object, the iru aru. Right? But if you say kaite aru, then that means it's written or it said something on, for example, the website, in the book. So, kaite iru, I'm writing or someone is writing right now or I've been writing it for a while. And kaite aru means I or somebody wrote it and it's written. So this te aru describes the state after the action has been made. So basically it means somebody, they wrote something and what's being written is still there. So the difference between kaite aru, to be already written, like written and is there, and kaita or kakimashita, the past tense, wrote, is that Kakimashita or kaita, informally, I wrote, somebody wrote, focuses on the action itself. Usually, you know who wrote it. If it's I, then yeah, the subject I is omitted. Like if you say, Hon wo kakimashita, then that usually means I wrote a book. And if you say, Mariko ga hon wo kakimashita, that means Mariko wrote that book. So these sentences focus on the action itself. The speaker is really just trying to say what that person has done. Whilst kaite aru is used to describe what's written. And when using this te aru, we don't even have to specify who did that. Really, the important thing about this te aru is the result. What remains after the action. So for example, if you want to say it says blah blah in the book, you'd say Honni blah blah to kaite arimas formally. Honni in the book blah blah <laughs> to kaite arimas. The to particle there is to quote what's written, right? For example, Honni shujinko wa yuki ga aru to kaite arimas. Honni shujinko wa Yuki ga aru to kaite arimasu. So, shujinko, protagonist. Yuki ga aru is to be brave. To kaite arimasu. It says, or that's what's written. Or if you just want to say the name is written on this paper, you can say, Kono kami ni namae ga kaite aru. Kono kami ni namae ga kaite aru. Or you don't even have to specify on this paper, in the book, if you just want to, for example, say the number is written. You can say, Denwa bango ga kaite aru. Denwa bango ga kaite aru. Oh, by the way, I used the ga particle for namae ga kaite aru, denwa bango ga kaite aru, right? If you just want to say something is written, instead of you quote something from the book, you don't use the to particle, you use the ga particle. Basically, when you want to say, it says that, and then you want to put another clause, you have to use the to particle. But if you just want to say something is on, something is written, 
use the gap article. When I was learning English, I actually found it funny that you said it says in the book. It's like, but there is no mouth in the book, you know? I was like, who is saying that? Who is speaking? So, because, you know, to say in Japanese is you, right? And then you to me is, you know, you always have to use mouth, not like you can't, you know, write something and you say, oh, the book is you, you know, like a honga it sounds funny. It's like the book has a mouth. It's like one of the Harry Potter books, you know, <laughs> like magic books with like the teeth. Um, so yeah, I thought that was funny. Anyway, we use the verb kaku, kaite aru, when the book says something. <laughs> By the way, the reason why I'm filming this lesson on te aru after the lesson te oku is because they are kind of related. You should learn this te aru after you watch te oku. So do you remember the sentence yoyaku shite oku or yoyaku shite oita? Yoyaku suru means to make a reservation or to book, right? And yoyaku shite oita means I made a reservation in advance. Remember? Or informally you can say yoyaku shitoita, right? And this te oku is used when the speaker feels like, oh, I'm doing this so we won't have a trouble in the future. They do something in advance, in preparation. Right. Instead of yoyaku shite oita, you could, for example, say yoyaku shite aru. Yoyaku shite aru. And that means the reservation has been made or I've already made a reservation. The differences are that one, yoyaku shite oita or yoyaku shite oku can give the nuance that they did it for the future. They did it so they can get in the restaurant, for example, right? Whereas yoyaku shite aru just focuses on the result or the state after the person has made the reservation. So there isn't really the nuance of like, uh, I did this so, you know, we can have a good time or anything like that. Also notice that yoyaku shite aru, this te aru is not in the past tense, right? Although it can be translated like I've made a reservation, the reservation has been made. It's because it focuses on the current state. So it really just shows the state, right? So, you know, if the Google could say if the reservation has been made or not, it would say yoyaku shite arimasu rather than yoyaku shite okimashita. Speaking of this state, you remember that with some verbs you actually have to use te iru to show the state. For example, if you want to say I'm married, you say kekkon shite iru or kekkon shite imasu. So you use the te iru. You can't say kekkon shite aru. That doesn't make sense. So the verbs that focus on the change of the state, for example, verbs like kekkon suru, to get married, you want to change it into kekkon shite iru, to mean to be married. Or rikon suru means to get divorced, and you say rikon shite iru, to mean to be divorced. Or yaseru means to lose weight or to get thin. If you say yasete iru, then that means to be thin, to be skinny. And futoru means to gain weight or to get fat. And if you say futotte iru, then that means to be fat. With these verbs, you have to use te iru, not te aru. So you just need to be careful with that. So just like there are only handful verbs that you'd use this te iru, to show the change of the state. This te aru isn't used with every verb or anything. You know, it's quite limited-ish. Like the ones that you see, you always see them. <laughs> um, like the common ones are used so often, but it's not like you will hear this te aru with so many different verbs. Kai te aru, you'll definitely hear. Yoyaku shite aru. 
the reservation has been made. That's also very common. And the other ones, for example, tsukutteare means something has been made, or kimeteare, which means something has been decided. So, for example, akachan no namae ga kimeteare. Then that means the baby's name has been decided. Like we've decided what the baby's name. So kimeru is the verb to decide, and kimete iru, for example, would mean I'm trying to decide. Like I'm deciding it right now. I'm trying to. I'm making a decision right now. While kimete aru, we've made a decision, and the decision is there. Also. Teare is often used with the verb oku to put. So, what's the form of oku? It's oite, right? Put down. Put it down. And oite aru means something has been put down and has been placed there. So, when we hear this oite aru or this teare generally, we think of a person putting down. And then that thing is, and the state hasn't changed. The state remains there. That's what we imagine when we hear te aru. So, oite aru. Okay. For example, you're trying to find a seat in a cafe and you thought, ah, seki ga aru. There is a seat. But you see that somebody already put a bag on the chair, for example. Then you'd say, ah, kaban ga. Oite aru. Kaban ga oite aru. The bag has been put down. Somebody put the bag there. By the way, it's also important to remember that we use the ga particle instead of the o particle because kaban here is the subject. So I've been translating like somebody has put down the bag, but it's more like the bag has been placed. The bag has been put down. Or you could even say, "Isu ni kaban ga oite aru." So, for example, "Kaban ga oite aru kara dare ka ga suwaru yo." "Kaban ga oite aru kara dare ka ga suwaru yo." The bag is there, so somebody is gonna take the seat. Or if you go to a hotel, they usually have towels ready. They put towel somewhere. You can say, "Ah, towel ga oite aru." "Towel ga oite aru." Or you can even use this exact same sentence. Towel ga oite aru. If you find the towel ready for you, for example, you're taking a shower and maybe your wife or someone put the towel somewhere for you, and you can say, "Ah,、oh, towel ga oite aru." Or somebody put the towel here for me. And if you want to talk to your wife later, like, "Oh, was it you that put the towel there for me? Did you put the towel there for me?" You can say. Towel, oite kureta no. Towel, oite kureta no. You can use the te kureta form, like did you do that for me? But if you just find a towel there and you just focus on the fact that somebody put on and then it's there, you say ah, towel ga oite aru. Towel ga oite aru. And for example, if you want to say it's all been paid for, you can say mo haratte aru. Harau is to pay, and haratte aru means I already paid, and we don't have to pay for anything anymore. Haratte aru, whereas haratte iru means I'm paying right now. I've been paying. Or tsukutte iru from the verb tsukuru to make. Tsukutte iru means I'm making right now. I'm could also mean I'm cooking right now. Whereas tsukutte aru. Means I've already made it and ready for you to eat or kiru to cut. If you say kitte iru, then that means I'm cutting right now. But if you say kitte aru, then that means I already cut them. They're ready to be used for cooking, for example. So, for example, you could say mo yasai wa kitte aru kara nabe ni irete. I've already cut the vegetables, so put them in the pot. Oh my gosh, on a kazuita, I'm so hungry. I hope you didn't hear it. Ah, 本当にお腹すいた。聞こえなかったといいな。<laughs> so, 野菜はもう切ってあるから鍋に入れて。And this te aru 
is used with transitive verbs. So if you don't know what transitive and transitive verbs are, then I have a lesson just for that. So please check out. It's pretty important. Anyway, just to review it quickly, there are two ways to say to open in Japanese. There are actually a few more, including like a weird, you know, formal way to say to open. But anyway, there is the transitive verb to open and intransitive verb to open. So, akeru means someone opens something. Okay. And that means to open, right? And another one also means to open. Aku, but you use it like something ga aku. So you focus on the object opening rather than somebody opening the thing. So if you're talking about a door, then if you want to say I open the door, you'd use the transitive verb akeru and say doa o akemashita. So still you don't have to show who is doing it, like you don't have to put the word watashi wa or tomu wa, right? You don't have to say watashi wa doa o akemashita. Without it, you still means I open the door. And this really focuses on the person's action, right? Whilst sometimes you just want to say the door is open or the doors opened. Sometimes it opens automatically. Sometimes you don't want to say who opened it. It's not really important. Then you use the intransitive verb aku and say doa ga aita. The door opened informally. Doa ga aita or formally doa ga akimashita. So we use the transitive verb with this te aru because te aru implies that someone has done something and the result, the state, remains. It's kind of important to know that somebody was involved in creating this state. We wouldn't use te aru with the intransitive verb aku, for example. But with intransitive verbs, you use te iru. So when you want to say the door is open, you actually use the intransitive verb aku plus te iru. So you say ai te iru. The te form of aku is ai te, right, the ku ending. Ai te iru. So you can say doa ga ai te iru to mean the door is open, right? And this doesn't focus on anyone. You're just stating that the door is open. You don't know who opened it, or it doesn't even matter in this situation. Door ga aite iru. But if you want to make it sound like somebody left it open, like somebody opened it and now it's open, or you want to imply that it was done intentionally. So the te form of akeru, that transitive verb akeru, is akete, right? And if you say akete iru, if you put iru, then that means I'm opening it right now, like akiteir. This is the action, right? So that's the present progressive. You're talking about what you're doing right now, akiteir. But if you say akite aru, then that means somebody opened it and it's staying open. So kind of like somebody left it open or somebody left it open intentionally. Akete aru. So with the te iru, you say doa o akete iru. You use the o particle. Like for example, watashi, you don't say watashi wa, but if you have to, you can say watashi wa doa o akete iru. Or watashi wa doa o akete imasu. Right? Whilst with this te aru, doa is the subject. So doa ga akete aru. Doa ga akete arimasu. Okay? So again, it focuses on the current state. So this is important, so I'm going to repeat again. Akete iru. I'm opening right now. Akete aru. Somebody opened it and it's open now. The current state, open. Aite iru. It's open. Okay. Akete iru. Opening right now. Somebody's opening right now. Aite iru. It's open. Doesn't matter who did it. It's open. The door is open. Akete aru. That's somebody opened it and now it's open.
So you can kind of see that akete iru is kind of, you know, you don't really use it. Like you won't, you don't say like, I'm opening it right now. I mean, maybe somebody says it, but you know, let's focus on these two. Aite iru. It's open. Akete aru. It's open because somebody intentionally opened it and left it that way. So I keep saying somebody, but it can also be I opened it and left it intentionally. So you could, for example, say, Atsui kara mado ga akete aru. Atsui kara mado ga akete aru. Because it's hot, I opened it and left it that way. Or more literally, because it's hot, window is open intentionally. And if you say, Atsui kara mado o aketa, then that means because it's hot, I opened it. It does still make sense, but it still focuses on the past. Like, I opened it then. Whilst, akete aru, it does describe the action of me opening it, but also the result is kind of important too. Like, it's staying that way because I chose to. So the same rule applies for the verb to close. So again, we have the transitive version and the intransitive version, right? So, transitive verb to close. So, I close, you close something. We say, shimeru, shimeru. So you say, mado o shimeru. For example, I close, I will close the window. So if you say, shimete iru, then that means I'm closing it right now, right? Shimete iru. But if you say, shimete aru, then that means I've closed it and it's staying that way. So it's closed now. But if you use the intransitive one, so it focuses on the thing itself rather than who closed it. So shimeru is transitive, but shimaru, that's the intransitive. Shimaru. And shimeru has an er ending. So the te form is easy. You just change the ru into te. Shimete was shimaru that has an aru ending. So aru ending conjugates differently from eru. Aru conjugates like ada u or tsu ending. So like matsu becomes matte, right? So shimaru also becomes shimatte. Shimatte. So shimatte is like please close and you're talking to the door, right? So you're not asking somebody to open it, but it's like you're asking the door, like, please close, right? And, shimatte iru. Again, with the entrance the verb, you use iru, not te aru. So, shimatte iru means it's closed. So, it doesn't matter who closed it. You're just talking about the fact that it's closed. Shimatte iru. Okay? On the other hand, shimete aru. Somebody closed it and left that way intentionally. So, shimete iru, I'm closing right now. Shimete aru, I closed it and it's staying that way. Shimate iru, it's closed. So if you're talking about, for example, a store being closed, like, oh, you were gonna go to a supermarket, but it's closed now. Then you say, ah, oh, shimate iru. Shimatte iru. It's informal, so you don't hear i, but it's actually shimatte iru, or more formally, shimatte imasu. That's the hard part, right? When we speak informally, you don't hear the i, so shimatte iru, shimatte iru. So you just have to recognize the shima, shimatte part, whether it's intransitive or transitive, but, you know. <sighs> Japanese, nihongo, gambatte ne? <laughs> anyway. Shimatte ru or shimatte iru. Shimatte iru. To mean, oh, it's closed. And you don't really say shimete aru when you see a store closed because it sounds like, oh, the owner closed it and now it's closed. <laughs> you know, uh, it, you don't really say that. You just say, ah, shimatte iru. Alright, there are a few more of these verbs that have like transitive and intransitive pair, right? 
So, do you remember how to say to turn on? Like to turn on the light, for example. Denki is light or electricity. So, denki o. If I want to say I turn on the light, then. Denki o tsukeru. Denki o tsukeru. So, that's the transitive verb, right? It focuses on the person. So, denki o tsuketa. I turn on the light. Denki o tsukemashita. Formally. And the intransitive verb of to turn on is tsuku, tsuku. So you don't even mention who turns on the light. You say the light turns on. Denki ga tsuku. Denki ga tsuku. So if you want to say the light is on, you can use this intransitive verb plus iru, and teiru, and say denki ga tsuite iru. Remember, ku ending, ku becomes ite, right? Tsu, ku becomes tsu, ite. Denki ga tsuite iru. Again, informally we omit i, so we say, Denki ga tsuite iru. Denki ga tsuite iru. The light is on, right? Whilst, if you want to say, somebody turned on the light and it's still on, then you use the transitive verb, Tsukeru plus te aru. So, denki ga tsukete aru. Denki ga tsukete aru. Or formally, denki ga tsukete arimasu. So, denki ga tsuite imasu. The light is on. Denki ga tsukete arimasu. Somebody turned on the light and it's on. Alright, so to turn on is tsukeru, but to turn off? Kesu, kesu. So if you want to say I turn off the light, then denki o kesu, denki o kesu. But the light turns off. Then we need to use the intransitive verb. So we say kieru, kieru. Quite different, right? So denki ga kieru. The light turns off. Denki ga kieru. Denki o Kesu. Denki o kesu. Well, I don't know why I did that. Denki o kesu. Denki o kesu. Denki ga kieru. So if you want to say the light is off and without implying that somebody left it that way or anything, you just want to state the fact that it's off. Then you use the intransitive verb kieru. Kieru. Puff. Kieru. So you say, Denki ga kiete iru. Denki ga kiete iru. Okay? And if you want to say, I turned off the light and it's staying that way because I chose to. Then, ke su becomes ke shite and then aru. Ke shite aru. Denki ga ke shite aru. Okay? Remember, again, you could just say denki o keshita, right? But that just means I turned off the light. It could even mean that I turned off the light, but now it's back on. Like, I could say denki o keshita no ni, mata tsuiteru. Remember, tsuku here is the intransitive. So, denki o keshita no ni, no ni, is like, why? Like, I did it, like, despite. So, denki o keshita no ni, mata tsuiteru. So, although I turned off the light, then it's on again. It's turned on again. So, the past tense itself, keshita or keshimashita, wouldn't really show the current state, right? Whereas, keshite aru shows that it's still turned off. The same with the verb like to break. So if you break something, you say kowasu. And if something breaks, you say kowareru. Right? So if you say kowarete iru, in transitive plus iru, kowarete iru, then that means it's broken. Like, pasokon ga kowarete iru, the computer is broken. But if you use the transitive verb, like the one that means I break, kowasu. And say, kowashite aru. It kind of sounds like somebody 
broke it on purpose and now it's broken. <laughs> so yeah, it sounds funny. Like, I guess, I don't know what kind of situation could that be. Maybe, yeah, it's so they can use it in the film, I guess. Like, uh, did you break that computer for the scene? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, we already broke it. No, it's all good to go. And then and that's like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. So hopefully you understood the concept of this te are. It usually implies that somebody was involved in completing that action and the focus is on the current state. But yeah, if you haven't really learned the intransitive verbs and transitive verbs, you probably want to. It's really about repetition, you just need to memorize it. So, and it's also easier to remember them already conjugated and also used in a sentence. So always remember a word in a sentence. So you remember like, mado ga aiteru, the window is open. Doa ga aiteimasu, the door is open. Doa ga akete aru, somebody left the door open, somebody Opened it and now it's open. Oyu o wakashite iru. I'm boiling the water. Oyu ga waite iru. The water is boiled. Oyu ga wakashite aru. I boiled the water and it's still boiled. Kagi ga kakatte iru. It's locked. Kagi o kakete iru. I'm locking right now. Kagi ga kakete aru. I locked it and it's staying locked. Yeah, so it is hard, but it's just about practice and you'll get there. Daijoubu mm. All right, hope you found this lesson helpful. If you want more lessons, please give a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. And I really appreciate you supporting me on Patreon. There was a month where I couldn't upload much and I'm so sorry, but I am trying my best now to get back to uploading a lot more. And I really am sorry if I disappointed any of you. Um, I will do my best and keep creating better contents for you. All right, ja, matane, bye bye.